Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for Amcreator. Today what we're going to be looking at is something a little bit different. I worked on this script for quite a while over the weekend and it's an interesting script. It can be used for multiple things especially since um, lists aren't actually in the program at the moment. Uh, I believe uh, there is some work from the contributors working on adding list variables, but currently we don't have them and I thought uh, there could be actually more uses for this other than just having a basic list um, variable type. So I thought I would work on that and I ended up coming up with four different kinds of examples and uh, uses two different types of inputs. Now you can use this basic script with pretty much anything. Uh, it just needs a trigger of some sort and it needs to collect the data for some specific type of um, text based thing. So it could be either variables, it could be, uh, it could be item names, things like that. As long as it's a text based field, then it can basically bring it into the list. So I'll show you the GUI first of basically how this system works and then we're going to break it up into a few different types of videos that will cover the different functions of the script. So there is one for adding, removing, checking the script and then there's also one for replacing and then I'll also show you how to adapt the script for basically each one of those categories in each video. So First things first, we have the entry name, which is basically the example of what we're going to be doing for the actual adding and removing, and I believe it's also used for checking as well. And uh, replacing uses the replace entity as well as the um, actual entry name. So let's take a look at the add one first, and we're going to just quickly type something, something like something and then we're going to just click the add button and as you can see down here it has added something to the actual list so we could add uh, something else else and that will add it to the list as well now one thing to note is there is actually commas between the words here and there's no spaces or anything like that the reason why there's commas is basically I'm using the commas to test for specific values between those areas. So it will actually test the first comma and then it'll test between the second comma and then anything between this value here, it's basically going to basically say, is this the same thing? And that's where basically removing, checking and replacing are very important to basically be able to check between those two, vari or two uh, commas and then if it doesn't find that thing, then it's going to move on to the next section, which is it's going to be the between the second comma and the third comma. So to remove that, all we need to do is basically type in the thing, remove, and then we can also type something else. Uh, to check, what we can do is go something else, oh, pardon me, something, and then check, and then it should print out something down here. So that's basically what it did. And if we go back into the G and we can replace something with um, else. So we can click that and it will update something with else. So that's basically how that works. Um, now to actually see it in action, let's just quickly clear our variable and we'll remove that. So we just have the first comma as you can see here and then we're going to right click with an item on any particular block as long as it's in our main hand and what that's going to do is it's going to set the actual variable to the particular script so we just create we right clicked with a bone on a block it added our the item name to that particular block so we'll do this for all the different types of items and as you can see here it's basically printed out all the different types of items. So we have bone, diamond, golden ignite, and honeycomb. So that's basically how I have the have adapted the script to work with something other than a GUI. So let's go into mcrater and then we'll quickly take a look at the add script today and then we will move on to the remove script uh, later this week and then we'll just continue the series as uh, we progress.
All right, so there's uh, multiple parts of this component uh, that we'll be actually looking at today, but we're going to be focusing mainly on the adding function of the script. I'll break it up into other parts for the other parts of the procedures for testing for the place and all the other stuff as well. But uh, first things first, we need to take a look at the GUI just so we understand the way it works. So down here is basically our, we're pu putting out our list item for our variable. This just lets us know what the uh, variable that we're basically testing for, uh, what all the variables are in that particular list. So it's just a string text. And the other thing that we need to know about today is our list item. This is the um, input name, which is for our text field at the top here where we're going to be basically adding the script to. So it's going to basically allow us to type something in, click the add button, it'll run the script, and then it will add it to the variable. So the name of the particular text field is important, it's just called list. So if we go back to our procedures and we'll take a look at the script for just generally adding things with the GUI. So it's this script right here, add uh, list entry script. And I'll break down what's going on here. So the first thing that we have is we have one variable. If we go to global variables, we have a list name and then we have the string for the type of variable, it's set for the global world. However, it can be for any global type of thing. And then we also have the comma or our default character for basically sp spacing out the words between. So you can use uh, any character. It's just, it should be something that won't interfere with other list items. So commas aren't generally used too much in Minecraft for names and stuff like that. So that would work fine. Uh, you can also use a backslash. That's a pretty safe character to usually use. So those are a couple options if you need to use characters or commas instead of, um, if you need to use commas, you can always use a backslash for your default character. Just one thing to note is it does have to be set as a default character for your first character. Outside of that, uh, there is the add script. So we have two local variables. We have the has character and substring position. So the substring position is a number variable, has character is a logic variable. Uh, to create those, you just use the uh, local variable editor and create the variables that you need. The first thing that we're doing is we're going to set the substring position to zero. Now this makes sure that it is set to the very first character in the substring position. So uh, how substrings work is starts at zero and then it counts up to the amount of characters basically used. So what we're doing after that is we're going to get the list uh, item for the text field and we're going to get the amount a number of characters in that particular text field. So we're going to test basically run the repeater the amount of characters that we have in the list text field after which it's basically going to test for our default character, which is our comma again. If you change it, this needs to also be changed. And we're going to test for a substring or substring of the list text field. And then we're going to get the position from zero by default. And then it's going to test for our zero plus one so that will be one in the first round that it tests for. Now, if it finds a comma, then what it's going to do is it's going to cancel out the has character. It's going to set that to false. And then what it's going to do is break out a loop. So it basically doesn't continue any further. Uh, if it does not find a comma, then it's going to just um, continue this script and says has character. Now, what basically is going on after that is it's basically increasing the substring position plus substring or equal to 
substring position plus one. So basically this number zero becomes one, this becomes two because it's plus one of the default substring position. So then it's going to test for the next character in the amount of characters that it basically runs from. So this will continue to count up and if it does find a character of the same type, then it's going to basically cancel that completely out and it won't run the script down here to add the character or the word that we're basically adding to the list. So if it does find the does not find any characters, then what we're doing is we're going to uh, test for two things. We're going to test if not, so basically if there isn't a list item and it's blank. So if it's not blank, it, if it has no spaces, then what we're going to do is we're going to also test for has character true, which again, remember that it basically should return true if there is no character. And what this will do is it'll basically go, okay, both of these conditions are true. It does not have uh, any blank spaces. Well, not blank spaces, but it's not a blank space. It has It does have characters and it uh, does not have any commas. So if those things are both true, then what it's going to do is it's going to set the global variable to create text with. So we're going to create an uh, compound text and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the global variable name and then we're going to get our text field name and then what we're going to do is add a comma at the end or our default character so these two parts here need to basically update uh, whatever character you decide to use for your global variable character here so that's important to have that in order for this system to work and what that will do is it'll basically add a comma at the end of the new entry that we basically added and that will make sure that it will uh, be ready for the next uh, test and for the other script to basically be able to use it. So let's take a look at how I've basically configured the other script for basically right clicking on. If we go to examples and there is example add entry script. So I basically just tweaked the script a little bit so we can basically use a display name. So if we go into items there is a get display name and then basically what I've done is I've basically just got the item in main hand of the provided entity and what I've done is basically just got the length of that. So I've basically replaced all the list text field parts. So again, if we go back to the entry, you can see all these parts right here, 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 and here are replaced with these parts right here. So get display name of item in, item in main hand of provided entity. And we have these parts right here. So that's the only thing that you need to change to adapt your script to support different types of things other than a text field. Uh, you could use variables, you could add anything that is a string based thing and you could just update these parts right here. So again if you are changing the comma then the comma needs to have these two characters updated but other than that that's the only thing that basically makes the script add to the global variable. Uh, next tutorial we'll be covering how the remove script works and how it basically can be used with uh, our similar system that we have with the right click ent entry for our display item of the item in the main hand. So we'll be covering that uh, later this week. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.